just do it. Romeo, just read it. I'm sorry, I can't hear you right now. I'm jamming the music. <laughs> How do you feel about the last few days of school, man? Um. Glad we're ending. Dude. No, I don't answer that question. Dude. Oh my God. Why is it no He didn't ask you to take off your glasses. Oh my. T tell him. This tell is him. my interview. No, no. It's no, this isn't the interview yet. Well, whatever. T tell him. Tell whatever him. Whatever this is. T tell him. Tell him mine. this interview isn't Look, a lie. This isn't. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, no, no. Yeah, no. it's not. No, Put no. Put on your fucking glasses. Dad, what the fuck are we doing here, man? Like, did, see this? This is supposed to be summer, like, right now. Uh -huh. no, it's Sunday, like, the day before Monday. What the fuck, man? We're supposed to be, like, having sex right now. Having sex. I got, like, you know what I'm talking about? Uh-huh. It's crap. Now I'm all sandy and mierda. Oh, my God. Oh! Oh, my God. Oh, 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 Take them Raja, and I'll let everyone else fill in the blank. So tell the fine people what we've been doing today. We went to Cannon Park to see Yo's dog being walked. I think it was stupid. Gomez, drag them Raja. This is the neighborhood that we all don't love. Yep. Tell us about it. Cabby lives over there. Claudia lives like right there. Euro lives right here. You used to live over there. I used a couple of blocks. So it was good sex back in the day. How long ago was it? About a year or two. So trying to hit you? I gave up after I knew you taste like salt. Euro Lopez is my name. I am known as the Fresh Prince to several people. Uh-huh. And religions. And religions. And religions. My age is 16. But don't let the bitches know that. My current occupation? Set. Nah, I'm just kidding, but... It works. I mean, it, 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 I it, mean, it, it could be. It, you're right. It's right. one of those possibilities. One of those. Either that or, like, working at Smoothie King, so... <laughs> you be like, oh, I need you to put pineapples and strawberries into this smoothie. You put like bananas and take a piss on it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, I put the secret ingredient. Hey, my name is Jack Ferraza. Uh huh. Known as Merold or the Phenomenal One. Uh -huh. I'm 16 year old, 16 years old, uh -huh. and I am uh -huh. a full time Euro's pimp. He's my bitch. I'm the pimp. Okay, thank you. you Mister. <laughs> oh. Oh. So soon? <laughs> Too soon. Oh. Dude, that's for the ending, dog. Oh. 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 Sorry. Yeah, uh, I thought you had it off. Uh, it was off. Why are you checking your phone, huh? Grab that. Grab this shit. No, man. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. Grab it. 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 Mr. Rob, <laughs> do you mind? I am answering. Answer... <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. You're answering questions. <laughs> oh, now I'm answering questions. Yes, Mr. Lopez, please, this interview has several staples on me, thank you. Mr. Lopez, please, this interview's out of control. Mr. Mr. Lo Mr. Moralda, please. Yeah, I didn't do shit. <laughs> oh, I got stuck in here. <laughs> Mr. Mr. Moraldo. <laughs> Damn it, miss. <laughs> Mr. Lopez, Mr. Moraldo, please. <laughs> You're not getting anywhere. <laughs> oh, hell. Oh, he's <laughs> Who are we talking about? Luana. And like, 
She's like all the way over there on the other side of Miss Carrasco's class, all the way in the far side of the math class. And I was like, <laughs> what the fuck, man? Now I can't talk to her. So now uh, I'm sending you a message and be like, hey, hey, we got to talk, okay? So like, yeah, we got to talk. That's it. Guys, you saw that bitch? That bitch? What bitch? That bitch. Oh, that, that bitch. That bitch. That bitch. That bitch. God. She's trying to, like, get up out of my Kool-Aid and shit and, like, like, trying to have sex with you like it's all good. No. It's my sex. It is your sex. She just goes somewhere. She does. It's like, like, bye. Bye. Yeah, bye See, because every documentary, right? has to have uh, a purpose or, you know, uh, something factual to base itself upon. And so when I heard that Hector Meralda and Yero Armando Lopez, members of the South Miami Senior High Band, um, were going to have the chance to perform at Super Bowl 44 on national television um, as part of the band, I figured that's where we gotta start. The journey of Hector Meralda and Yero Armando Lopez towards Super Bowl 44. Oh, what the fuck, man? All right, so here's the deal. All right, it's uh, Saturday, January 23, it's 3.13 p.m. You know what I mean? All right, now it's me, Hector, and Tomas. Say hi, Tomas. Hi. All right, and here's the deal. In two weeks, in two weeks, we'll be performing in the Super Bowl. The Super Bowl with Queen Latifah. Now we gotta document our lives from here until I'll tell you when. February the 7th, that's two weeks. And we'll be in the Super Bowl. Right. Right? Now we got a bus behind us. It's good shit. And now let's talk about that bitch. Oh my god. You know what bitch I'm talking about? The, the, that bitch. You know what I mean, Tomas? I do. Like, that bitch was like, all over your dick and all. Like, no, no, shut the fuck up. Like, he's mine. Like, all right. I met him since, like, grade school. It's like, shut the fuck up, all right? You whore. And so began what we thought would be a simple little video reminder of our journey towards the Super Bowl. First stop, Merle's house. Right, so, go, so how's the game going? So how's the game going? Why can't you? I cannot the get through, through this fucking wooden door, dude. Like you can plow through like millions of like enemies, but you can't destroy. I'm, the door. I'm gonna fucking waste my. Well, ammo go go to the, the store. No, go to the yellow little star. Go towards the star. The yellow star. Yeah, maybe you're supposed to go there. Dude, the I'm star. Dumb. No, the star on the on the comp. Com dude, yeah. this this guy isn't dead, bro. <laughs> I've seen like. He's like he's blood, yeah, yeah. Like, so how's it gonna feel not going to the Super Bowl? Mm, this is Daniel Espinoza, famed design and architecture student, and major disbeliever in the fact that Hector Meralda and Yero Armando Lopez will be going to the Super Bowl. Let's see what happens. I am going to the Super Bowl. You are? When? I am. When's the Super Bowl? Where's it at? Where's it at? My hat? Hmm? Where is it at? Where is the Super Bowl at? At what time? Who's playing? It's either the Colts, it's either the Colts, the Vikings, the Jets, or uh... Uh, I hope you know the Super Bowl includes two teams. I know, but right now they're still figuring out who's gonna go. Look at that, man. You don't even know who, who's gonna no, play, no, bro. I mean, wait, no, no, you're not. No, you don't no, know. No, you don't even know, bro. Stop making shit up. I could call someone up right now and see who's going. Well, then do it. So it's, it's Vikings versus uh, who? Oh, Vikings versus Saints and the Colts versus the Jets. You can come to my home on the day of Super Bowl Sunday and you're not gonna find me here because I'm going to be at the Dolphin Stadium. When I show you the group picture of all of us with Queen Latifah, you are gonna know that I was there. I, I want to see you. Queen Latifah on your dick. All right, all right, you are, you are. <laughs> You guys stay in the back. You can't be in their face. You gotta be in the back. Why? That says so. Can I be on the side? I'm the director. You be um. You, you be, in the be back. actually going front. No. 
The next day I tried to film the same kind of thing with Mr. Yero Armando Lopez, although it didn't go over too well. Today is crap. We we're supposed to have sex today, but we can't. All because of this shit. See this? It's crap. Obviously it's not song. But still. Fuck man. We're supposed to have sex, like sex. We're gonna have it, so. I'm upset. But uh. I guess we'll just have sex another day. Another day. Pictures. Then I started thinking, what if instead of making this documentary just about us, I made it about all of us? What if instead of being just a little video tribute, I made it a tribute to teenagers, to student life, to what we talk about, to what we think about, to what we do at school, to the stupid stuff that we do, to the smart things we sometimes say? Friends thought it was a good idea, and that was enough inspiration to begin what would become the sophomore slump. Super Bowl? No. Is your dad going to the Super Bowl? No. Why not? Isn't it football? Well, Hector and Yero are going because they're part of the band, so they're going to perform next to Queen Latifah. Oh, Tifa. that's so cool. That's right. Do you believe that? I know that they're playing. I heard that. I trust everything's going swimmingly. So Tom, is this your camera? No. Have you? Well, I guess if a person never quit when the going got tough, they wouldn't have anything to regret for the rest of their life. Sometime later, I was able to procure an official camera for the documentary, and early February became the first month of official shooting. Hi, Tom. Hi, Tom. I'm gonna bring the DVD. Hi, so Christine. I uh, hear you have a new boyfriend. Yeah, you do. Yeah, you do. Going out with uh, Mr. Merle? No, I'm not. Yeah, you are. I saw you guys yesterday. Yeah, and you said you saw us in the rain. No, we're not going out. Yeah, you were wet, man. You were wet. I thought that if we have free education in this country and we're having all these budget problems, okay, it's free the first time around. But maybe we should charge if you fail. Maybe we should be charging for summer school or virtual school or, you know, you make when you have to make it up. And somebody there said, no, that's... that's uh, they can't do it. It's written into the statute. Public school is always public. Public school is always free. I think an education is something you do for yourself. You can repeat the grade, like you can repeat like the classes. If um, for, it was made for people who are incapable of doing that, for people who are too lazy to do it. But now the people that are too lazy, they're like, oh no, why should I try if I can do it again? So what if I fail? I'll do it over. Or maybe there's too many, because the government has made so many things that if you don't if you don't match up to the standard, if you don't reach these expectations, there's always something that you can fall upon to support you. So they're like, why do I have to try when I can just get that. this? Thomas, you're filming absolutely all of this? Tell him to get that shit out of Get that shit out of my face. Get that shit I'm proud to talk. You know you remind me of someone, but I don't know. You're not recording anything, don't you? Stop recording. So, the Super Bowl. Uh, let's see. We have New Orleans. Uh, New Orleans is kind of cool. I, I, want, I like him to win because, you know, they went through Katrina and stuff. And besides little wins from there, he's like my idol. But it's all about the Colts, man. The Colts got this. It's, it's the Colts, baby. There's nothing else. It's football. I don't really care who wins. Whatever. Uh-huh. 
And that's about it. And how do you feel about our band performing at the Super Bowl? Our band is performing? I think it's marvelous that South Miami students are going to get to participate in the Super Bowl. Uh, I don't usually watch the game, but I'll be looking out for them. During school, Never. the weekend they're for. Go videotape their ass. Tell them they're retarded. Pretty cool. Wait. We're gonna ruin his documentary. <laughs> ah, here we have two very. My name is Ani Lavis. I'm 15. I don't have an occupation. <laughs> I mean, I'm a student, but that's not an occupation because I don't get paid for it. I like your shoes to start off. And that is a lovely shirt. I've already been recommended for the Science National Honor Society. I applied for National Honor Society this year. Oh, no, no, no. Oh! <laughs> Give me that back. I think I had my close, like, best friends in seventh grade. And then, because of the, these were the people I had all classes with. And then because of the change of schedules in eighth grade, we didn't stay close, but I got close to some other people. I'm not giving everyone thank you seriously at all. I talk to them now and again, but you sound like you don't care. It's you need true. to reflect. Oh, because I feel like that I'm in therapy. <laughs> I know you care. Man, I'm itchy. I was born to Jane Marie Glass, but in kindergarten I decided that that was a boy's name, so I wanted to be called Jeannie. I'm 16. And I'm currently occupying my house until I'm 18. And school. I'm doing a broadcasting magnet now, so it's like, oh, she should go into broadcasting, right? But I want to write, because I really like to write, duh. And I think I also like psychology, because I'm taking a psychology class, and I've always been interested in the different aspects of that. So I'm going to try to go into psychology, I think. OK, let's go through my schedule, right? Oh, here we go. I hate chemistry. Just, I totally despise it. So, in fun with pressure, every lab group competes That's right, to see who can generate the highest pressure in a water bottle. And there will be two rounds. Ooh, oh my God. The winning team gets three superstars. Three superstars. Second place gets two. Third place gets one. Get sad. Bring it around down. Brush Really? I don't like math so much because I don't even have a teacher at this point. Gold equals wisdom. I guess. Tissue. Uh, right. Well, right now we're in math class. And uh, working on some assignments, and some other people are talking about important life stuff. These are my highlighters. They are my addiction. And today, my purple highlighter died. Rest in peace, purple highlighter. I knew you were. Anyway, so um, so I haven't been doing that well in algebra, but right now I'm getting ahead, and I understand a lot more now. Did you just show your English homework? Broadcasting, actually thinking about that, that would have to be my favorite class. 
Like I love the atmosphere in that class. It's like it's like chill, but it's very it's I like it. This will be your last opportunity to, to submit these pictures that will be in the prom day with your cover sport. That's what they always say to last of your Phoebe, what's wrong with you? So what do you, you think of Phoebe as an anchor? I think Phoebe is a wonderful anchor. What do you think of Dennis Rogers? Prom tickets will be sold on a cash basis. Psychology too, but I hate to say that it gets a little boring at times. It's very, it's like a lot of talking. But it's interesting, like if you're paying attention, it's interesting. It's just, after two hours of just sitting there, it's kind of like, alright miss, I want to go home. What's going on right now? We're waiting to go into psychology to watch One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. We're going to walk in now? Yeah, I'm walking in. Come on, follow me. I feel like a tour guide. <laughs> this is the multitude of people going in? Uh, what? A lot of people going in. Yes, I know. So Big class? It's a lot of people. So Amanda. Yes. What, what's, what's, what are we doing right now? I'm writing a free write on one floor with cuckoo's nest. Okay, look. So we did these little personal profile things where we put pictures on it that like describe ourselves and whatnot. And basically we're gonna present it to the class and try to guess who it is. Well, why don't you explain everything the way you think it should be? Okay, this is like a monkey thinking and this person's like always thinking. This is the name of a movie he's doing. The people that he like looks up to. Um, this is it is. Well, I know the handwriting. Yeah, so, so do I. It's Thomas. Harvard, because I think she wants to go here. <laughs> Elmo, because she likes Elmo. Uh, London, because she might oh. want to live in London, or likes London. Yeah. Hearts, because she likes love. I think it's Annie's. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> By now it was evident that I had found my story. The very fiber of this documentary would become things that would otherwise be inconsequential. The passing between classes, the latest joke in class, and so I continued. On a journey that would take me through one of the best high school years yet. If you want the freshman experience, just ask a freshman for real. Alright, let's do it. Hey Tom! The freshman experience is actually pretty cool. Okay, we're the lowest of the low, but hey. It's okay, you know? <laughs> Still want to hit somebody. Stacy in her natural habitat of South Miami Open Senior up. High. Ready? Go! Oh. <laughs> right here. But the Super Bowl idea was still in action. Want to take some? Uh... That's right. So it's day two of Super Bowl practice, and I am signing. Don't get the rest. Just get the, the little picture. Super Bowl contract, which means I can't have sex until the day after the Super Bowl. It's kind of a problem right now because I'm kind of in a situation. So we're gonna see how this goes. You have fucking sex? If I have fucking sex. Fucking sex! Fucking sex! Oh, my God. oh like, no! It's like, like, oh. like, how? Oh. There's thousands of reasons for which best friends come together, but never before did I think that one of them could be a common creative interest. Yet that is exactly what I've seen in the Word Genie crew this year, shown here in the local school library. Welcome to, uh... Word Genie! This is not word, This is my life. Welcome to the world that I live in. Next question. Next question. Uh, ex excuse me, sir. I, I work here. Tom, this is a water fountain. I'm pretty sure you don't work here, dude. I beg to differ. Uh, excuse me, miss. Uh, I work here. Tom, this is a bathroom. I'm pretty sure you don't work here. Uh, I beg to differ. Does anybody have any questions? Tomas! Yes, uh, hi, I work here. That's a fallacy. You don't work here. Fallacy. False notion. What is your name and or nickname, age and current occupation? My name is Jacqueline Data. My nickname is Jackie, Sam, Monica, MC, Jax, Jackal. What is your age? My age is 16 years old. I work on a segment in the newscast called Word Genie. I film and I edit that as well. Huh? Introduce yourself. Oh, hi, I'm Jackie. I'm the best director and editor ever. 
Hi, that's Jackie. She's really conceited. Yeah, I am. Her overconfidence is amazing. She's all bitches. She bitches. I understand you're upset, but you I'm so sorry. This is a bitch fit in action. Despite an inseparable bond, the Warrior Genie crew wasn't without its problems this year. Why is it always your way? It's not. It's always your way. It's always Calm your way. Down. It's always your way. You're horrible. All you do is say the word and you expect me to yes, follow I you? Yes, I do. I really do. You expect me to follow you. Because you're my friend. No, and because you're, you're trying to boss me around. Yeah. This, this, I, so I yeah, asked you as, as a friend you're to, very persistent right now. to do Warrior Genie um, as a friend so I could boss you I around. will spray you. <laughs> Don't spray the microphone, please. Don't spray Let's the Let's get to it, tea. come on. What do you think about your TV production teacher? My TV production teacher is, um, he is an interesting person. Like, what are you doing? A documentary on student life. He can be very childlike at times. I'm a bee, I'm a bee, I'm a bee, I'm a bumblebee. And then also there are days when he is just too mature and he just won't lighten up. Tomorrow, you could put that as part of Tom's thing, and then we'll be able to put it at the end. Basically, the reason I'm saying this is because if it doesn't tie in with the rest of the newscast, then it doesn't make sense. It's not a random thing. If there was a story about it in the newscast, then it's okay to close with a little bit of a longer version of it. But just to put this clip that's random at the end of the newscast makes no sense. Okay, well, Mr. Diaz is being very irrational, okay? I personally think that a funny video would help the newscast and help the sophomore class. Mr. Diaz is a very professional type teacher, yet very much a kid at heart sometimes. So I have to, you know, the documentary, a lot of stuff I saw there, the light, the audio and stuff doesn't come out right. Give Mr. Diaz doesn't know up. that we haven't had a second camera for three weeks and now he's complaining. Mr. D, TV production. Remember I told you, to the point and clean and boom. Okay. When he speaks, he tends to yell. And he doesn't mean to yell, but he just talks really loudly. I want to see a change today. You guys are good kids, and you guys do good as a team together. Let's not ruin that. All right, let's go through this now, and then we're going to do the newscast. I think it's all those years being on a helicopter has made him deaf. He used to hang out at the side of a helicopter to film city shots. He worked at news stations, and obviously he was editing if he won three Emmys for editing. Mr. D is Mr. D. He can't really... Uh, there's no way to describe him except Mr. D. And what about our other teachers? I have one teacher that I hate his guts. I have another teacher who was really sweet, but then she left. I have one teacher who is like my second father. I've been told apparently that I'm very, uh, very judgmental of my teachers. There are a few that I just can't stand and I wish I was not their students, but I always see everything as a challenge, so I always have to stay in the class rather than try and get out. But um, there are those few teachers that I like and that are helpful. I have one teacher who's like the sweet old lady that you can always talk to. And I have one teacher who's like this lady that I've had forever who, she's pretty cool at times. <laughs>
<laughs> a place where you get your education. And it's also a place to like chill with your friends. Okay. Middle school, you're walking around and your drama is like, oh my god, she hates me. But it's like you go to high school and it's just like, oh my god, she fucked him. Like, it's totally different. You understand what I'm trying to say? What do you think high school is? I think high school is pretty much a rite of passage. But to be honest, I can't wait to get out of high school. I'm really excited to go to college. Probably not the most important years of your life, or the funnest, because that would be college, if you go to college. But I think it's a runner-up. You're primed, like, you just want to, like, turn to Hussein right quick. You just, like, you just want to, uh, you know? Right. You get bitches. Yo, Cindy, what's up? You met me at, at the movies last time. You don't remember me? My name Ryan. Pick up. <laughs> All right, call me back. You know, Sunday's a very special day. Yeah, right, going down the hall right? into the boys' locker room, whatever. The, the thing is, maybe, if we're not busy, we can get together, right? We can do something special together. Oh, you're a bitch. She has a boyfriend. Because you grow economically, it's pretty much the point where everybody starts to mature, especially boys. Oh my god, I'm in high school. Let me talk to everybody. I'm going to make friends with the whole entire school, not give a shit. Yeah, but it went wrong. Because I think I realized in sophomore year that I know all these people, I don't like any of them. You know what I mean? It's like when you waste your time trying to make all these connections and whatnot, like half of them aren't real. And I think that with the freshmen, I mean, I came from a pretty big middle school, but this was huge. So I think I felt like I had to know everybody. But now it's just like, eh, you get me? Middle school is like the awkward stage where you go through every single possibility of personality. Everyone has their chonga phase. Different And then you have your emo phase. And then you have your Hector phase. Then you find yourself. But this is in the summer, like after eighth grade. Exactly. You're getting ready for the biggest experience of your life. So far. There's a Facebook group and it's it's like something about like, oh yeah, every year I look back on the last year and I realize what an idiot I was. And like I was an idiot. I was such a freshman and when I was a freshman I never really understood the expression, God, you're such a freshman. I totally understand it now. I suppose high school. You go there after middle school to learn shit that you didn't learn in middle school. I mean, to some people it's a prison, to some people it's the next step. Uh, before college. I'm really excited to go to college. Okay. What 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 do you what do you like about college that you don't find? Um college is that I can take classes that I want to take, not that I'm required to take, even though you are required to take classes, but you're not required to take specific classes, just classes in a general area. Right. And it's a lot easier to find something that you enjoy. Also there's more freedom and I prefer to be a lot more independent. I hate working in groups. In your experience, in your lifetime, which has been better, middle school or high school? High school is great. I, I love it. You know, it's a place where you find yourself. Oh, you mean my penis? Okay. And you become who you are. But it can't get better than middle school, in my opinion. Can't get better than middle school. For me, I think high school is better because, like, middle school, like, my friends, they changed in middle school. So you, you realize, like, how rude people can be. Okay, cool. you know Hebra? I had it for middle school, but I've known her since elementary school, since the very beginning. We've known each other for 13 years. And today, she's my best friend, and we have yet to have a fight together. I've had one friend, my friend Mr. Daniel Spinoza, Daniel that I had, he's been friends with me ever since pre-kindergarten, and he's still my friend to this day. And we've gone to different middle schools and high schools, right. so I think that one has not been tarnished. Because, you know, a lot of people say that middle school is kind of like the, the bridge between childhood and, like, later adolescence, so. I actually just, I think it's a transition. It's, you, it's basically true. You're not a kid anymore, but you're not really an adult either. Not that we're adults either, but 
we're, we're a lot more adult than when we were in middle school. I know when I was in middle school, I thought I knew everything in the world, and I thought that I was so smart, I was smarter than everyone else. And then now that I'm this age, I'm like, what was wrong with me? I'm not that smart. How would you compare high school to middle school, then? High school to middle school. No. Personally. Here we go. Middle school was the most memorable nightmare I'll ever have. Because, like, you're growing up, you're, tr you're learning to define yourself as a person. You're looking into groups, not groups, but like you're joining cliques, you're getting out of cliques. Middle school is more like a growing up experience. I like the fact that there is a middle school to just um, give that structure for personality. Think of our romantic relationships at this age. <laughs> okay. To hold on, let me let, give me a second if you don't mind. All right, so Christine, I uh, hear you have a new boyfriend. Yeah, you do. Yeah, you do. Going out with uh, Mr. Merle? No, I'm not. Can you stop that? I'm not going out with him. I can go out with as many guys as I want until I find the one, but it's like. I don't know. It's like I'm in the I'm on the fence about that. You know what I mean? Because if you don't go around and do and meet people and get to know different guys or whatever, you're not gonna know what you want. One month. So we're talking here about like the fact that Christine used to ignore me and everything. She didn't know who I was. And no, you yeah. said I'm not that was going out. That's date. I'm not going out. Yeah, that's what you said. And now? And now she's sitting on my lap. Now I can do this. Oh my god. Yep. Quick question. What is you guys' take on romantic relationships at this age? If you find someone that you are attracted to, I mean, it doesn't hurt. Right. It, doesn't, it doesn't mean like, oh, you know, it doesn't mean that me and Christina are going to last forever. You never know. I would want it to, and I hope so. But I mean, if it doesn't, it doesn't. Just life takes its course. Are you sexually active? No! Yeah. 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 Answer the questions. I'm going to leave. I feel the same way. I think... <clears throat> you know, just be optimistic about it, and you never know what can happen in the future. What do you guys just take on sex before marriage? I pay the fifth. <laughs> oh my god! Oh god! All right, all right, all right. For the record, let it show. That she has not let me do anything. I still sometimes stick by the thought that you should wait till it's someone really, really special, or unless it's marriage. I don't think. Our age group is ready for romantic relationships. I mean, we can say we are, but in the end, we're going to do something immature. Or we're going to show that we're immature about it at one point. How big is your dick? It's a per is this is a, this is a professional question. You must Just answer answered. it professionally, and it'll all be over soon. I don't have a dick. Okay, then. All right, thank you. Moving on. What was that? First sexual thing you've ever done in your life. I'm not answering that. You're answering that. I'm not answering that. I'm gonna have to get intellectual. I'm about the mind fucker. Are you familiar with first base, second base, and third base? Yes. What base would you say you're on with your current boyfriend? Would you say you're in between first and second base? It's possible. It's possible. Would you say you're in first base? It's possible. Have you passed first base? Possible. I believe so because I see you guys in chemistry all the time, so I know you're past first base. Okay, I'm past first base because first base is making out. Oh, Whoever oh. isn't past making out in like sophomore year is really like penis. Let the record show that he wants to really, really do something. Dude, like everybody's having sex, and like, what the fuck, man? Where's our sex? I, I'm not. Look, bro, I'm not that bad looking. Okay, what the fuck is, is this shit? And the funny uh, thing is, he's the sexy one. Exactly. What the fuck is up with that? Hormones. I, I Look at that shit! What do they do? Look man? at that shit! Look at that! <sighs> you can't have that, Yarrow! Shit, I don't know, man. Like, hey, I've man, had boyfriends. Five, I was thinking about this. I was like, man, he's gonna ask me this. I don't know what to say. It's like, you never know until you try, I guess. Are you really in love? Probably not. Um, he's constantly on your mind because you want to fuck him. But I'm so picky in myself that if I find something that I don't like, it's like, fuck you, I'm not gonna waste my time, you know what I mean? Which is kind of pathetic of me too, because it's like, oh yeah, I'm not gonna whatever until I find the guy that I think is perfect, and that's not fair. But it's 
fair to myself. Eh, bueno, la relación es buena. Siempre que haya comunicación entre ellos es importante y eso es lo, lo mejor, conocerse, conocer a la otra persona, lo que hace, lo, lo, el, sus metas, sus aspiraciones, sus vivencias. Es muy importante que tengan un buen, una buena comunicación. I'm gonna be a writer. I'm gonna do shit that I wanna do. I'm gonna not have to worry about all of the things that I have to worry about right now, whether it be teeny cleaning room or like, oh my god, you have a report due tomorrow. You know what I mean? I'm not gonna have to do that shit. I'm gonna be a writer. Hopefully done with school. Hopefully I have a degree in something. In some sense. In some sense. Still know you, this other bitch, and this third bitch. Third bitch. Four bitches in total. So the ho hopefully the four bitches are still friends. Playing poker. Playing poker on on Fridays. On Fridays. On Fridays. On the, by the by the by the corner. By the, by the corner. corner. We all go to like my my garage and we have the little table and we're all playing poker. They're like beer and shit. Yes. Yes. Hopefully we have that going on. Uh, to be a writer and a teacher, doing both, having family. Where do you want to live? Uh, I want to live everywhere. <laughs> I want to stay here and raise my kids with my parents around, but I also want to move and I don't want to stay here when Florida sinks into the ground. Just having like enough income to like support the family. I want to go to FSU or UM, study pre-law or engineering. And then I want to go to Harvard, get married, have a couple of munchkins. <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> what? What is this? Are you serious? I'm How are you asking questions? Like <laughs> <laughs> please, please, Mr. Lomas, 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 please. Hopefully, my parents are still alive so I can go fishing with my dad. I don't even know how to fish, but damn it, I'm gonna go fish with my dad. What do you think this documentary is about? You know what it's about. I don't know what it's about. I, I think you should tell me what it's about. You should tell me what it's about. <sighs> this documentary is about the sex. It's just the record of all the experience we've had. <laughs> all throughout the whole year and I I I cherish them and I hope that you guys can enjoy this as much as I'm enjoying this right now. <laughs> and that is end scene for us, I think. Ah. Alright, excellent. We did it. That's so bad. Now get out of here. I'll talk to the team. <laughs> hey, really? No. Alright, so we can leave now. Yep, let's go. Right. Mm -hmm.